Anun hor ye bortvo ye hokvui surpo amen. Welcome to another session of Let's Talk Badarak. Last session we elaborated on the liturgy of the word and we emphasized how that part of the liturgy is when the congregation receives Christ through his word. Through the procession of the gospel book, Christ enters into our assembly by his word and his teaching. Today we will elaborate on the Eucharist, the second main part of the Badarak, which really is a remembrance of the Lord and his last supper. This section starts with what is known as the dismissal of the catechumens. Through the centuries, as the church welcomed new members and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people entered the church, first as catechumens to be taught the gospel and then to be baptized, the church allowed for the catechumens to participate in the liturgy of the word so they can hear the gospel, the scriptures, and the sermon and reflect upon the teaching of the church. But at the end of the liturgy of the word, the church invited the catechumens to leave the assembly since they were not yet baptized and they have not received Christ as their Lord and Savior, then they were not ready to receive the communion. That's why the church asks them to leave the church at this point. The deacons proclaim saying, which basically is proclaiming that none of the catechumens, those who are preparing for baptism, and none of those who have sinned to the extent that they have been excommunicated from the church or have asked to do some penance, or those who are not sure about their faith, that none of these people stay in the assembly henceforth, rather leave to the outside of the church. You can hear the prayers from the outside, but cannot participate in the communion. The dismissal of the catechumens then sets the stage for the bringing of the bread and the wine to be used as the body and blood of the Lord of the Last Supper. So following the dismissal, the hymns and the prayers focus on the arrival of Christ through the chalice and through his body and blood. The deacon historically would carry the bread and the wine that was produced and prepared by the people, the faithful, from the main gate of the church to the altar. Through the centuries, this practice changed. Nowadays in the Armenian church, the church prepares, the clergy prepare the wafer to be used for communion <clears throat> and the wine as well. Usually a portion of the bread, nishkhar, is used for the communion and the remainder of the bread, which is unleavened, the mass, is distributed back to the congregation. As soon as the chalice comes and is placed on the altar, two, three things happen. Number one, the celebrant removes his slippers. Remember the story of Moses as a, uh, an indication that he and the rest of the congregation are simply servants at the altar of the Lord, where the Lord now has arrived to preside over. Uh, and then when the chalice is placed and liturgically everybody is ready, the deacon comes and kisses the chalice and receives the kiss of peace from the celebrant who basically tells the deacon, go and tell the congregation, Christ is revealed amongst us. Christos image may have hidden itself. Beautiful celebration, recognizing the presence of Christ. The deacon then comes down singing, Greet one another with a holy kiss, for Christ has uh, been revealed amongst us. And as this kiss of peace comes down from the chalice, from the altar to the congregation, the choir joyfully reinforced the presence of Christ by singing, which translates, Christ is now revealed amongst us. A beautiful song highlighting the participation of Christ as a presider of our liturgy. After the kiss of peace, the church sets the stage for the main part of the section, which is the anaphora prayer. Liturgically, anaphora prayer is the main prayer of remembrance. It's a long prayer that the celebrant reads through which he remembers the various aspects of God's salvation plan, beginning from Adam and Eve, and of course focusing of the birth of Christ and his ministry, and finally slowing down at the Last Supper to the extent of uttering the words of the Last Supper when Christ says, take, eat, this is my body, 
or share this amongst you, this is my blood. The prayer is a long prayer, which sometimes is uh, continued silently by the celebrant. Meanwhile, the choir sings a hymn, uh, the words of which correspond to the theme of that section of the private prayer. But the priest continues uh, the anaphora, sometimes singing parts out loud to remind the congregation to where he is in that prayer. But anaphora is the main part of the Badarak. It is a prayer of remembrance. We don't hear the whole anaphora because it's intertwined with various hymns that were inserted later on to make the liturgy more engaging of the congregation. The Eucharistic prayer or anaphora ends with a unit that's known as the pre-communion unit. This unit basically is a practical preparation for the communion. It is in this unit, the pre-communion uh, rite, that we sing the Lord's Prayer. There's a set of petitions first, then the Lord's Prayer, then there's a prayer to the Holy Spirit to come down uh, upon uh, the bread and the wine. And of course, there are practical things that happen. The priest actually dips the bread in the wine. So when we deliver communion to the congregation, in our tradition, we don't give the body and the blood separately. Rather, we dip the bread in the wine and we give portion of the body dipped in the blood to the congregation. At this stage, there are a few hymns which are very important I'd like to share with you. For example, as the pre-communion rite reaches its end and we're about to receive communion, the celebrant turns with a chalice in his hand and he proclaims saying, Isur, Isur, Badvagan Marno Yevharene, which translates, In holiness, let us taste of the holy and precious body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who having come down from heaven is distributed amongst us. This is life, hope of resurrection, propitiation and remission of sins. Sing psalms unto the Lord our God. Sing psalms unto our immortal heavenly King who rides in cherubic chariots. The priest at the climax of the preparation turns to the congregation with the chalice saying this is the body and blood of the Lord. This is our hope of salvation. Of course the choir responds reinforcing this. Historically until the 17th, 18th century Immediately after this, the deacon will say a petition, a litany, reinforcing the same thought, and then the choir will sing the hymn, Ortniale Astvads, which reads or translates, Blessed is God, the sacrifice Christ is distributed amongst us. Alleluia. He gives us his body for food, and he washes us with his holy blood. Alleluia. Come near to the Lord and receive the light. Alleluia. Taste and see how sweet the Lord is. Alleluia. Praise the Lord from the heaven. Alleluia. Praise him in the heights. Alleluia. Praise him, all his angels. Alleluia. Praise him, all his hosts. Alleluia. The hymn beautifully celebrates the fact that the chalice, the bread and the wine now are a portion of the sacrifice of Christ that is being presented to us for the forgiveness of our sins. Earlier I said traditionally this hymn comes after the priest's proclamation because practically, uh, beginning with the 18th, 19th century, a popular hymn has been inserted between these two acts, which is the hymn Der Vormia, Lord have mercy. As our people were experiencing the horrible tragedies of the beginning of the genocide of the 1800s, 1900s, and ultimately in the 15 genocide, the church fathers felt it practical to insert the hymn, Lord have mercy, which is a prayer uh, for those who are suffering, for those who are sick, for those who are imprisoned. At the end of Lord have mercy hymn, we go back to the hymn, uh, that we explained, following which the deacon invites the faithful to come and receive the Holy Communion by saying, with fear and with faith, come forward and receive communion in holiness. 
as the congregation receives communion and it's over, the celebrant blesses the congregation, turns back to wash the chalice and uh, clean it while the choir sings the hymn, Litzak Parut Yam Koder. We have been filled with your good goodness, O Lord, having tasted your body and blood. Glory in the highest to you who have fed us, you who continually feed us, send down upon us your spiritual blessing. Glory in the highest to you who have fed us. Reinforcing the fact that we have come to be fed by the body and blood of the Lord. The hymns I translated to you in this session and many, many other prayers and petitions in this part of the liturgy emphasize the fact that the objective of Badarak is to receive Christ. In the liturgy of the word, we receive him through his word, his teachings, his preachings. In the Eucharist, we receive him as he commanded us through his body and blood. Thank you very much and God bless you.